We have a great interview for you lined up. Ex-Pakistan international cricketer, the king of spin, the master of the dusra, Saklain Mushtaq. Assalamu alaikum, brother Saklain. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How are you, brother? How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. What about you? Yes, uh, I think uh, I, I'm feeling great. I think it's going to be a great uh, chance to talk to you. I think a lot of our listeners are Pakistani supporters and I'm sure will be very happy to listen to you talk about your career. Good, good. So, first of all, tell us, where are you based at the moment? I'm in Leicester. I'm, I'm based in Leicester now. Based in Leicester at the moment. Okay. And uh, I assume you do coaching at the moment? Yeah, I work with the Bangladesh team and I'm a freelance coach now. But um, at the moment, I'm uh, just having the time off from my coaching for a couple of weeks. And then I'll be involved with the Bangladesh team again. Okay, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about your coaching a little bit later on. But let's start off talking about your early career, your international career. It started at a very young age, back in 1995. So tell us a little bit about your early county career and how you made it into the Pakistan a team at the ripe age of 18. Obviously, I used to play age group in Pakistan. I played in the 14, and the 16, and the 19, and then Pakistan A, Pakistan Youth. And then I came, I played my first class domestic season for PIA, and then after... After the after that season, uh, I got picked for Pakistan uh, uh, President Eleven side game against Sri Lanka, and uh, uh, lucky me that you know I performed well with the with the help of uh, with the help of Allah, and then I got picked for Pakistan team, and I played my first Test match against against Sri Lanka in Pakistan in '95. And when you came into the side, uh, who were maybe the the leading players, the players that you looked up to? Obviously, Imran Khan and Javed Nalad, Wasim Akram, Waka, you know, I used to, uh, you know, admire about them and uh, really like the game. And obviously, in batting lineup, Javed Nalad and Salim Malik was there, Sayyidan who was there. And obviously, Mushi, uh, he was the main spinner in Pakistan team. So, all these players, I used to look uh, look up to them. And uh, obviously, Inzi was there in 92. So, these were like my favorite players when I got selected for Pakistan. I used to see them. I used to admire them. Mm. And these a lot of these players they won the World Cup themselves, didn't they? Yeah, ninety two World Cup. That was um, you know uh, a wonderful uh, World Cup for Pakistan, and uh, they brought a lot of happiness and joy for for the country. And was that your sort of inspiration to go into cricket, or did you start at a, at a younger age? What sort of yeah. made you come into it? Yeah, actually, uh, cricket is, you can say, my family sport. My uh, older brother used to play cricket, and uh, my father used to play hockey and kabaddi. He born in India, and uh, he used to play hockey and kabaddi. Okay. So sport, sport used to run in our family, and then my brother used to play, club, uh, uh, obviously, professional cricket. And I saw them, and I used to go with them to play cricket. And then uh, uh, from there, you know, I used to watch international games as well. So, you know, yeah, yeah when I was... Say seven, eight years old, I started playing cricket. And tell us a little bit about your other sports then, because as you said, you said you, your family was a very big sporting family. Uh, I heard you're a fan of squash, hockey. Yeah, I did. I uh, played a bit of squash as well uh, for my fitness. Me and Wazi Makram used to play squash um, for okay. fitness. And uh, yes, hockey, I used to play hockey. I used to play badminton, volleyball. Um, uh, and a bit of a bit of soccer as well, but uh, mainly cricket. I used to play all these sports just for fun and just to to have a a bit more you know fitness uh, from the other sport. You know. Yeah. Uh, so when you did make it first into the Pakistan team, you you had your domestic career had basically kicked off. So you were playing for PIA and Surrey. So tell me, what was the difference playing for PIA and playing for Surrey? Obviously, in the subcontinent and playing here in the UK. Yeah, obviously, massive difference. You know, in Pakistan, it was dry pitches and um, dry and hot weather over there. And um, here, obviously, wet and cold and green uh, pitches over here. Totally different cricket. Learn a lot uh, playing uh, at the Oval um, uh, in my early early days. That how to bowl in a in a English rather in a Engl in the English conditions. Or oh, totally different, like dry and wet conditions. Totally different. And the techniques-wise, um, the, the batsmen in Pakistan, they play different shots in a different area. Here, they play in a different area and they play different shots. So, mm. learn a lot playing for Surrey. Um, uh, and that really helps uh, for my international career. And that must have been tough because obviously the ball doesn't spin as much here, does it? 
Yeah, in Pakistan, obviously, uh, the ball, uh, uh, you get more spin. But uh, at the OL, I used to get spin and bounce as well, uh, especially in June, July. Um, yeah, but definitely in Pakistan, you get more spin. So, would you say at a domestic level, what was your best achievement at a domestic level? Um, I used to play, when I used to play for Surrey, I think uh, uh, my two hat-tricks in the championship and two hat-tricks in one day, one day cricket, that is, uh, I think, my best achievement for Surrey. And then obviously we won championship uh, three times and one time for Sussex. So, four championship and... Um, couple of uh, one-day tournament, Benson and Hedges and Sunday League and T20 mm. uh, tournament. Uh, the first ever T20 in England, we won that one and we lost the final in the second year. So these are, I think you can say, not just mine, Surrey, Surrey's best achievements and uh, I had a great time and these, I mean, I can't uh, forget these days, uh, those days and these are my memorable, memorable days. Would you say the county cricket, it doesn't get as much coverage as it should do these days? They should actually. They should, and um, uh, you know, they uh, all the counties they have their own now. They they have their own uh, private channels now. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, do you mean channels as in you can listen to them online or? Yeah, you can. You can see like sorry, they have their own online channel. You can see. You can um, you know listen to commentary as well. Now they are doing. You know, they are they are trying to promote more and more and more county cricket. Okay, so when you actually started off with your bowling in Pakistan, you actually got the quickest 100 one-day wickets. Now, your spin bowling was innovative. Would you agree that you were the first player to master the Dusra? Alhamdulillah, uh, I've been blessed and, um, you know, you can say that, you know, Allah gave me that uh, gift. And yes, definitely, I'm the first one who started Dusra. And the Dusra is a... Let me tell you one thing. Dusra is uh, the Urdu language word. When I used to bowl Dusra, Moin Khan used to, uh, obviously, he used to keep for Pakistan that time. And he used to say to me, Saiki, don't do Dusra right now. <laughs> just, uh, just, uh, just hide there and do it after a while. When I will give you a signal, then you do the Dusra. So when okay. he used to shout Dusra, his voice used to go to, go to the, micro, uh, you know, the, uh, the microphone into the sounds. And then the commentator used to listen that when I were... Moin say Dusra, says Dusra, then Saki does Dusra, so this is Dusra. So, that, so I think credit goes, the word uh, that is in cricketing dictionary now, and I think the, the, the credit goes to Moin Khan, that he gave the name to that delivery, Dusra. And obviously um, uh, the credit goes to Allah, that Allah gave me the tawfiq and the ability to do that uh, delivery. So yeah, I give credit to Allah and obviously Moin Khan. And did you teach it to yourself, or did somebody actually teach it to you? No, I taught myself. I used to play on the roof in Pakistan, you know, as, as you know, in Pakistan we have flat roof, and I used to play with the table tennis ball on the roof. Yeah, of course. And I used to try, I used to try different sort of uh, theories and techniques, and I learned from there. And then I, uh, and then I start work, started working with the tennis ball, and then with the cricket ball. It, it took years, uh, me to to get the control on that and uh, basically I learned that Dusra on my roof of uh, of the house. And how did you the come across doing phone. it then? I mean, how do you actually do the Dusra? Can't tell you on the phone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's it's something that takes a long time to master then, so you're saying? It is, yeah. It, yeah. Is. it, takes, a lot, it takes a lot of time, yeah. Uh, is it true you've actually created a Dusra delivery? Yes, actually, unfortunately, at that time I was out of the team. I couldn't make him back. And, um, yeah, I, I, I tried that in ICL. And actually, the commentator used to call Jalebi. <laughs> <laughs> when I did, yeah, when I played ICL, they used to call Jalebi. This is an, uh, another delivery Jalebi. I think you can see on, uh, on YouTube. Uh, and they used to call Jalebi. And what does the ball do? Does it, does it slide? It's sort of a. It's a, it's sort of a backspinner and a bit of drifter and obviously uh, lower trajectory. Backspinner, lower trajectory and a bit of drifter. It's a mix of everything. You know, when, the, when there's a good shine and if there's a little bit wind uh, blows, then, you know, you can get drift as well. And then obviously it's a lower trajectory and uh, sort of a backspinner. And I suppose that's the beauty of spin bowling. You can do so much with the ball. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. As a, as, a, as a spinner, yeah, you can do so much. You can use the crease, you can use the popping crease, you know, and then you can uh, use different uh, sort of uh, variation, and uh, you can use the wind as well. You can use uh, um, uh, what you call your toe, your your calf muscle, your, you know, so many things. I mean, I can't I can't really explain on the phone. Mm. But yes, in in spin department, you can do so much. Right, so when you were actually in the Pakistan side and when you were playing international cricket, who in your time was the most commanding batsman in Pakistan and in the world? And who was the toughest batsman to play against? Obviously, in Pakistan, Javed Miyadad was the toughest and uh, you can say the master uh, of, the, of his field. And then Inzi, Inzi was there as well. And Salim Malik, when I used to bowl them in the nets, they used to really give me tough time. But... Uh, I used to enjoy. I learned a lot to bowl against them, and um, that really helps me to bowl against the uh, the world class players. And um, from uh, from the from the different countries, like uh, definitely Sachin Rawat, uh, uh, Ganguly, they were the best player against the spinners. And from Sri Lanka, I mean, the Silva was really really good. And um, from England, uh, Graham Forbes, he was really good against the spinners. Australia, uh, no doubt about. Uh, uh, Steve Waugh and Mark Waugh, uh, they used to play really well. And uh, from West Indies, BC, uh, Ryan La uh, and um, Carl Hooper, they were the best. From South Africa, um, Jack Kellis, he was, he was good. He was tough, you know. He used to give a uh, tough time. And Gary Kirsten. And a lot of his names, they still are as well. You know, there are a few, they are, they are still there. Yeah. Like Sachin, Kellis, they are still there. Um, um, yeah, I mean they are still there. They are still around. And when these when these guys are there for such a long time, when when they say they're on a hundred stands, you know they're still at the wicket at that at, for that long. What do you have to do as a bowler to try and switch it up? Obviously, you know when they are there on the crease, you know I used to back myself. I used to believe in myself that you know I can get them out. And obviously, it depends on the pitch as well, and on and on the condition as well. And sometimes, you know, it's like sort of a you know. You, you 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 really uh, got to find the way how to catch them. You know, like I always say that you know to catch a lion or catch a bird, you you use different technique. You know, <laughs> yes, uh, of course. So so the similar, you know, if the players are playing at subcontinent, you catch in a different way. If if, if the, the the same player playing at English condition, you catch in a different way. You know, mm. so you use you have to use the different techniques and different tricks. And at, during your time as a cricket player what was your greatest cricket moment would you agree that it was your century against New Zealand yeah 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 lucky me that was the worst day of uh, New Zealand <laughs> cricket history when I'm at the end uh, yeah that was yeah that was quite exciting for me and obviously for my family as well and uh, because they were there they were watching me that was my first ever hundred um, yeah great memories I had, uh, I had, I had good time uh, in, in, uh, in New Zealand what about as a bowler as a bowling, I have few memories. I have a few, uh, quite few uh, good games against England at Lords um, in one day netless series in one day tournament. Uh, uh, I bowled the last over. I think probably they need about seven or eight runs. Trescotic was playing 110, 15 not out, and they were like five, six down. And I was bowling the last over, and uh, lucky me, you know, God, um, God blessed on me, Allah blessed on me, and I. And we won that game. Uh, uh, I, I took uh, Truscovic's uh, wicket, and then I took another two, three wickets, and then we won that game. That I can't forget. And obviously, Chennai Test match against India, when Sachin was playing really well in the second innings, they need about 36, 37 runs. They were five down, five wickets in hand, and um, I was bowling, and I took five wickets, took Sachin's wicket as well, and we, we won about, I think, probably 10, 12 runs. Uh, we won uh, for 10, 12 rounds, and I think you know, I can't forget that one as well. In, uh, in Australia, 5 for 29 against Australia in Carlton and United Triangular Series, and uh, played against Australia. I was bowling the last three overs, and they need about, I think, probably 27, 28 rounds in six overs, five, six overs. Mm -hmm. And they were like five down. And Steve Waugh was playing really well, and um, I took five wickets, and we won that one day game. I can't forget that one as well. And against India in Brisbane, uh, uh, we need about 60 runs. And me and Waka Yunus was that team, number nine, number ten, and we need about 16, eight or nine overs. And uh, 
and we won that one. And I hit, I hit a massive six to Shinad straight over his head, and um, and uh, I made about I think probably 38 runs, 36, 37 runs, something like that, and won that game. And um, that time I really felt good, uh, you know. And then I started believing that I can be a all rounder, you know, from that time. And uh, after that, I made the hundred against New Zealand. And then I think that game really uh, clicked me that I can back. And um, I can't forget that game as well. There are a few others. I then the hat trick against Zimbabwe in the World Cup at the Oval. Yeah. Um, then another hat trick against Zimbabwe in Pakistan. Uh, I can't forget that one as well. And then uh, and um, a lot of uh, wonders and test matches. I mean, I can't really you know go. There's loads. But I think I believe, yeah, I believe <laughs> every game is very special for me. I always treat my every game special for me. And I used to concentrate really well. Yes. I had a great time, actually. Yeah. Yes, treat every game like it's your last, as they say. And yeah. you, you mentioned as well that you, you truly believed you could be an all-rounder. Well, 14 is actually a very good um, test bowling average. I mean, sorry, batting average for somebody who plays lower down the order. And... Mm. When you were batting, who was the fastest bowler, would you say, that you ever faced? Uh, and Bradley. maybe the fiercest? I faced Bradley. He was scary. You know. Lucky me, I faced him uh, at the, at Charger, which was the slowest pitch. Okay. Slow and low. But still, he was really quick. Whenever the ball used to pass me, I, 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 you know, I can hear the voice of the, the ball is passing <laughs> to me. You know. um, and, um, yeah... I played against uh, Glenn McGrath. He wasn't fast, but he was really awkward and dangerous bowler. Courtney Wall, Ambrose, they were scary as well. I played against them, faced them. Really scary bowler. Um, Haddock from England, Darren Guff. They were quick. Donald, I played against Donald. Oh, man, he was scary as well. And here's another question as well, I'm sure. I, I've been, a lot of people would ask you this. Wasim or Wakar? Both, man. I can't say just Wazim or just Waka because if you go to the garden and you see different flowers, different smells, I mean, the flowers are flowers. I mean, I can't say I can't pick one. You know, when you go to the garden, you like all the flowers. They are like that. They yeah, <laughs> both are the best. It's yeah, a, certainly a very good best. metaphor. Mm. And, you know, when you did start to begin coaching, a lot of people would have thought that, well, they would have wanted you to play a little bit longer for Pakistan. So when did you start to begin coaching? After 2004, when I, when I got injured, uh, I had my knee surgeries. I had four operations in my both knees and I was on 37 weeks on crutches. Couldn't, couldn't walk for like more than seven months, you know. I mean, couldn't, yeah, I mean, couldn't uh, walk without crutches for seven months. And after that, I decided, you know, that I can't go away from cricket. Cricket is my life, so then I decided going into the coaching. I started coaching after 2004. But I used to play club cricket, uh, county cricket. I played for Surrey for two, three years, and I played for Sussex one, mm. one year, and then I played ICL as well. Uh, I'm still playing club cricket, and I think uh, this year I'm playing for Eversham in Birmingham, Premier Division, or uh, I think Premier Division or First Division in Eversham in Birmingham. I'm playing this summer. I'm still playing cricket, but I'm in more more into the coaching now. So I started my coaching after 2004, which means I think probably 10 years now, nine years. And, and how are you actually involved in coaching currently? I'm enjoying a lot. I think I think uh, I done the right uh, thing, you know, uh, uh, to to to, uh, to involve myself into coaching. I'm enjoying a lot, and uh, uh, thanks God, I'm still in, uh, into cricket. I'm still involved uh, with the cricket, and I'm having a great time. And as we know, you yourself are Muslim. How important is your faith to yourself and how do you feel it's helped your career? Very important because um, uh, I think Dean is, Dean is the way of life. It teaches you how to, how to work honestly, how to, you know, uh, to get discipline in your life and how to focus, you know, while praying Salah, you know, you, you try to focus, you know. Mm. And uh, in obviously in your job, you try to focus as well, and it gives you more patience, uh, more content contentment, you know. And uh, obviously, being is all about uh, uh, peace and uh, honesty, and uh, you know, delivering the best uh, um, uh, for your life. You know, I mean, if, if uh, best character, best personality. Um, Dean is he, he giving me so much. I mean, I can't really say it's a huge subject, but to explain on 
on the phone for like in for a few minutes it's it's unfair but I think mm. that, that Dean is there of life and I'm learning a lot from Dean uh obviously for my life as well and it's a, it's a, it's a purpose of life you know of course of course uh mashallah it's, it's very good to see that uh you actually have sportsmen these days who are inspired by the Dean mm. so if we talk about the current Pakistan side are there many players there that you think we should be looking out for you yourself being a coach is there anybody there who you think really sticks out? I understand people are not happy at the moment the way they played against South Africa, but I think uh, they are full of potential and talent. They just need to, uh, they just need a bit more time. Mm. And I'm sure it's been a long time I haven't been to Pakistan, but I'm sure these guys they are very sort of skillful. They need some time. They should lose a bit of patience as well. Uh, test cricket is a different cricket at the moment uh, because they've been playing a lot of one day and T20 cricket so they are taking that momentum into test cricket but they need some time and uh, I think they are really really good player uh, like Nasir Jamshir and uh, Asa Shafiq and Azhar Ali and all these guys uh, and it's, I think it's a good combination senior and junior together they shouldn't think that you know get rid of uh, the senior player or change it, chop and change. They've been doing a lot of chop and changing. You know they shouldn't do it. They should okay. give them proper opportunity and give them proper time. And we have like good bowling side uh, side as well. We have good fast bowlers. We have good spinners as well. So we should keep you know uh, with patience. You know and um, actually yes, I will say that you know we need to organize a bit more. We have to plan a bit more better. We have to train a bit more better than uh, what been what we've been doing. Here. And you you'd say that's the way to go in terms of starting to deal with these batting collapses which have happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we have to we have to have the plan and we have to have, we have to organize better than what we've been doing now. Thank you very much, Daniel. And inshallah, I'll see you when I'll be around in Birmingham. Yeah. Yes, Keep inshallah. In touch and uh, whenever you, whenever you want, you can give me a call. Yeah. And then, they definitely will have dinner together. I think the listeners in, in uh, 93.5 Unity FM would be very thankful. Thank you for speaking to the Sports Lounge. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye.